Hey guys, Pedro here to tell you about the latest from Before the Dawn, Archaic Flame, out March 8th on Napalm Records. The EP has four tracks, 14 minutes in length, and this is the band's fourth. They are a Finnish melodic death metal band. As I mentioned, there's four songs on this release. Two are brand new. One is a very outside the box cover. I was absolutely shocked that this song uh, made the EP, that they decided to go with this cover. And then there's a live track. Now, before I break down all of these four songs, let me talk a little bit about the sound and about the vocals. The sound on the brand new songs, because those are the ones that have perhaps a little bit more impact, it is very uh, connected with Wolf Heart. It, it almost feels like it could be part of that universe, and that surprised me a little bit. I, I, I don't know where the inspiration came for these tracks, but if you took them out of the context of this EP and you put Thomas on vocals, and they were released as part of a Wolf Heart album, I don't think anybody would be shocked, surprised, or, or even wondering what had happened. So there is a little bit of Wolf Heart in the sound, specifically of those two uh, new songs, and that is something that's undeniable. I really felt that connection. It works well in the context of Before the Dawn, but you could see the influences of Wolf Heart coming into these two brand new songs. Now, as far as the vocals are concerned, I feel like all four tracks really emphasize the path that Pavo has had in this band as far as taking control and taking the lead as the frontman. His performance on the brand new songs is phenomenal. Real well integrated as far as the vocals and the sonic experience, how everything comes around, how he's able to navigate a lot better these songs. He sounds a lot more comfortable than he did on some of the previous tracks on the last full length record. So he's really coming into his own zone and this EP showcases that in more ways than one. And I'll explain what I mean by that as I go through all of these four songs. And let's get right into it. Starting off with Archaic Flame, the opening track, very melodic song, but with that thick guitar sound that like I said earlier, has a little bit of a wolf heart uh, DNA in it. It's a track that is very balanced and warm and the drum sound behind it uh, of the overall sound experience really adds to that warmth into that balance. It's always nice how they find room for these melodic undertones, really soft, uh, the way they integrate the thickness and the heaviness of the track, but also allowing the song to have some softer moments, which creates obviously those, those important ebbs and flows so that the song doesn't stay linear. The harsh vocals on this track fit perfectly with the sound. They feel like they're getting the most out of the sound and the sound is getting the most out of the vocals. The clean vocals in the chorus are haunting. That is the way they come across. That's the way they connect with the experience, with the lyrical content and with the way the song is designed. Really elevating the track with that chorus, allowing the song to have some moments where it can breathe a little bit better. The way the bass pops as well makes this track really encompassing in terms of bringing all of the players to the table and giving everybody a chance to shine and showcase their talents. A very encompassing song all around. The next brand new track is Chaos Sequence. Uh, it has that same similar guitar sound as Archaic Flame, that thickness, that heaviness in that thickness, and then obviously the melodic intertwined elements that allow you to see a little bit of a softer belly as far as the overall heaviness of the track is concerned. It's a more methodic song. It's a song that paces itself and the cavernous har harsh vocals add to that slower movement of the song, blending perfectly with the sound and really feeling like both are holding hands as you progress note in and note out. The, the, the sound and the vocals really working together as one to create that methodic movement that becomes the DNA of the entire track. The chorus comes in with clean vocals, but then has layers to it. And those layers to those clean vocals really helps create this massive depth of sound in experience. And I thought that was a really nice, interesting caveat that didn't allow that part to feel uh, to feel a little bit lighter. It is lighter because you're having that change between harsh vocals and clean vocals. But by adding all of the layers behind it, 
you still give some umph, you still give some thickness to the overall vocal sound coming across even though you're not really changing what the bass line is all about as far as that vocal bass line is concerned. So an interesting twist that plays really well with the more methodic presence of this track and allows the song all around to feel a little bit more balanced, a little bit more linear, a little bit more controlled but definitely working well from beginning to end in order to create an impactful song. And this takes us to the cover, Run To You, a Brian Adams cover. Not in a million years if you ask me if these guys were going to do a cover song that I think Brian Adams was going to be their pick. And specifically, Run To You. I, I just didn't see this song as, as an option for Before The Dawn, but here we are. And it's a very interesting cover, a cover that has me slightly divided because there's a lot of things about this cover that I really enjoyed but there's one element that I actually didn't like. Now what I enjoyed about this cover I enjoyed the sound. They did a really good representation of the song but keeping also the before the dawn DNA sprinkled in throughout the track. The keyboards, the amazing melodies that the keys provide throughout this song uh, are really interesting. It, it, it keeps the originality of the song but it gives it that before the dawn DNA in it and it's a song that sonically is very pleasing, it's easy to listen to, uh, it, it's connected with the original but at the same time it has a lot of the band's DNA in it which is always something that I really enjoy in a cover. So musically this song is exactly where it needs to be. The issue that I have with this track is vocally and it's not the clean vocals. I thought the clean vocals were phenomenal. I just don't want any harsh vocals whatsoever on this track. They use them as a backing uh, vocals to the clean vocals in the chorus. And I didn't like that. I, I honestly felt like it wasn't needed. I, I understand or I think I understand the reason why they really wanted to create that dynamic because that's a dynamic that exists in Before the Dawn songs, the use of clean vocals and harsh vocals. And I think they wanted to keep that DNA alive in this in on, in this cover to keep that that part of who the band is and, and who they are uh, also represented vocally on this cover, but I honestly f don't feel like it fits there. It feels a little bit out of place. It just, uh, it, it just irked me ever so slightly when I was listening to this song because the clean vocals are so good. The sound is so good. The combination of the two are so good. The, the keys throughout the entire song are phenomenal. There's just so many great elements to this track and, and the clean vocals carry the song magnificently well that you don't need those harsh vocals behind it. Even though they're very subtle, they're not uh, imposing themselves into the song, they're not at the same level as the clean vocals as far as sound and volume is concerned, but obviously you still notice them. And for me, that took a little bit away from what could have easily been a perfect cover of Run To You. Now, last but definitely not least, Dying Sun, a live song. This was the opening track from Soundscapes of Silence. And I feel like this is an important track to incorporate on this EP. Not for the, the fans that have seen the band live, but for the fans that have never seen before the Dawn Live, and there's a lot of us out there, this song gives us an idea of how this band sounds like live now with this current lineup with Pavo on vocals. And to me, this is an important element because one thing is for you to listen to the songs in the studio. One thing is for you to listen to the new songs on the new record with him as the lead vocalist. And the other thing is wondering what would the old repertoire sound like, feel like, come across like in a live setting when this band in this lineup is performing them. So having Dying Sun as the closing track really answers a lot of questions and it's an interesting song for the fans that haven't seen the band play live because it answers those questions. You're able to see what they are and who they are as a band and this new lineup really delivering a track uh, in, in, in the best way possible. It really felt like it was a song from the last record. It felt like it was written for him vocally because he was super strong in it and he delivered a great performance. I just have to wonder, do they have any more of these live recordings laying around somewhere? Because this one was really well put together. Great sound, you still hear the audience, so he still has that live experience, but it almost comes across more as an in-studio live recording. That speaks volumes to the overall quality of the track.
This is it, Before the Dawn, Archaic Flame, out March 8th on Napalm Records. Let me know your thoughts on the band on the singles. Hit me up in the comment section, and I'll see you all at the next video. Take care, guys.